The third Sunday of Advent is also known as Gaudete Sunday. Gaudete is the first word in the entrance antiphon, encapsulating the readings and the theme of the day. The antiphon from Philippians chapter 4 verse 4, which is in the second reading, reads in Latin, Gaudete in Domino Semper, Iterum Dico Gaudete, meaning rejoice in the Lord always. Again I say, rejoice. It is therefore a joyful reminder that our salvation is near. Pope Francis calls it the Sunday of joy, emphasizing that instead of worrying about the things yet to be accomplished before Christmas, people should instead reflect on the good things life has given them. Joyfully today, Father O God Daniel Onora will be joining us to reflect on the theme of joy in the second reading. The first reading is from Zephaniah chapter 3 from verse 14 to 18a. The prophet Zephaniah, whose name means the Lord has hidden, prophesied during the days of King Josiah, but is the least known of all the minor prophets. The book, which has only three chapters, can be read in about 15 minutes and is dominated with the theme of the day of the Lord, Yom Adonai. In chapter 1, he warns the people about the coming day of the Lord and their punishment for rejecting God. In chapter 2, he invites all to repent and seek the Lord since the whole world will be subject to punishment. And in chapter 3, Jerusalem and the nations will face punishment but God will restore them with their conversion. Our passage, chapter 3 from verse 14 to 18a, concludes the book with a song of joy that invites them to rejoice in the Lord who restores them. The theme of rejoicing suddenly replaces the message of punishment to give a joyful conclusion to the book. So our passage reads, Rani bat Sion, Hariu Yisrael, Simchi ve'olzi bekol lev, bat Yerushalayim. Meaning, cry aloud, O daughter Zion, Shout, O Israel, rejoice and exult with all your heart, O daughter Jerusalem. The four imperative verbs of joy, to cry aloud, ranan, to shout, ruar, to rejoice, sameach, and to make merry or to exult, alas, reveal the great joy people feel when their hearts are filled to overflowing. In the Messianic era, the cause of this great joy is Yahweh God. The Lord God is replacing their fears and apprehension with joy for he says he has taken away their judgment and cast away their enemies. And the Lord, the King of Israel, is in their midst. Therefore, they shall see disaster no more. The prophet's passionate appeal then and now is seek the Lord. For he has planned the day of judgment. But also rejoice and praise God, for he has brought us deliverance and salvation by coming to dwell in our midst. Emmanuel, God with us, the source of unimaginable joy in his kingdom. And Yahweh, he says, will gladly rejoice over you, renew you in his love, and exalt over you with loud singing as on a day of festival. The second reading today, Gaudete Sunday, is taken from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians, chapter 4, from verse 4 to verse 7. Verse 4 has these resounding words, O rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, O rejoice. In Latin, it reads, Gaudete in Domino Semper, Iterum Dico Gaudete. Gaudete is the Latin word for rejoice. And it is from here that 
this Sunday takes its name, Gaudete Sunday. The reading exhorts us to rejoice. It says, Let your gentleness, your forbearance, be known to everyone. It doesn't tell us to rejoice because everything has become okay. It tells us to rejoice in forbearance, in expectation. The word translated gentleness or forbearance here is APAKES, which connotes the sense of practicing restraint. Things are not moving okay as we would want, but we we'll have to restrain ourselves from acting inappropriately or in outburst. Or rather, we restrain ourselves. We, in fact, find reason to rejoice because the Lord is near. The reading goes on to tell us, Do not worry about anything. Do not be anxious about anything. There are problems, yes, but in everything, by prayer and supplication and with thanksgiving, make your request known to God. That is the way to approach it. Our worry, our anxiety does not solve any problem. It rather adds to it. And so, in spite of the present situation, in spite of the fact that things are not working the way we want it, the fact that things have not gone as we have planned them, will not make us not realize that there are reasons to thank God and to live in hope that the Lord is coming. Not just coming, but He is near. So the Word of God tells us today, when we act like this, verse 7 here says, The peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. The peace of God. He airene to teu. This peace stems from the Old Testament, the shalom that means the total well-being which God gives. In the New Testament, it connotes the salvation which Christ brings. When we carry every anxiety and worry to God and thank Him, we will find reason to rejoice because our Lord is near. He is coming to save us. Our gospel today from Luke chapter 3, 10 to 18, continues the proclamation of John the Baptist, which we heard last Sunday. As John was preaching repentance, many people came to him. In verse 8, John says to them, Bear fruits of repentance and do not claim we have Abraham as our father. And in verse 9 he says, Every tree that does not bear fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. That is the background to the questions we have in our gospel today. Three groups of people, the crowd, the task collectors, and the soldiers asked him what they must do to bear fruits of repentance. To the crowds, hoi oiklos, John said, whoever has two tunics is to share with him who has none, and whoever has food is to do likewise, in other words, give alms. Traditionally, Advent was also a time of giving alms, a time of sharing with others. So it is not only during Lent we give alms. To the task collectors, John says, Collect no more than you are authorized to do. The task collectors worked for the Roman government. We could term them civil servants for the Romans. They collected more tax than was expected of them because they kept a considerable part for themselves. John tells them to collect no more than was authorized. To the soldiers, he says, do not extort money from anyone by threats or by false accusation and be content with your wages. It would appear as if John is talking to some security forces today in some countries where threats and extortion are prevalent. An instance of the NSAS demonstration in Nigeria in October 2020 comes to mind here. Three things John tells the security forces. The first, not to extort. Second, not to use threats and false accusation. And the third one, they should be content with their wages. 
Yes, sometimes the wages of some of our security forces may be unjust, but that shouldn't be a justification for doing evil. John's responses to the three groups invite them to keep the commandments, not to steal, not to kill, not to bear false witness, not to covet their neighbor's goods. The Lord is near, and to prepare for him, we have to go beyond the commandments to do charity, give to the poor, and share with those who do not have. The people began to think that John was Christ, the Messiah, when they heard him preach in this way. But John, in his humility, openly declared that he is not fit to undo the strap of the sanders of the Messiah. He baptizes with water, but the Messiah will baptize with the Holy Spirit and fire. The imagery of the winnowing fork references the harvest of wheat and separating it from the chaff, which was very common to the people of Israel. The coming of the Messiah is not only about bringing the good news of salvation, he will also come with judgment to separate the wheat from the chaff. Hence the reason to prepare, to keep the commandments, and to do charity. The Devar Adonai team thanks you for listening, and may Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. To follow our reflections for Sundays and solemnities, please subscribe to our YouTube channel or follow our Facebook page, Devar Adonai, or visit our website, devaradonai.org.